Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Only Stupid Answers. This is the show where we answer your questions about movies, TV shows, comic books, dungeons, and dragons. I'm your host, DJ Wildridge. With me, as always, is Roxy Stryer. Hey, Roxy. Hi, DJ. We're going to talk as if we didn't record this out of order. How you doing? <laughs> I'm so good. How's your morning going? Oh, it's so wonderful. I'm really good. excited to talk about the movie we're talking about today. More excited, if I'm being candid, more excited than I anticipated uh, talking about this movie. I thought this was going to be like, we'll get through Dungeons and Dragons. And then I saw it. I'm like, oh, shit. I'm uh, so happy because <laughs> as I was watching it, I was thinking, I really hope DJ's good with this. Yeah. To the point where, there, unfortunately, I had to step out to use the restroom at a point, And I came back and my wife was like, you missed a really good scene. And I was like, actually, that's okay because I'm not going to mind watching it again. Like when this is streaming on Paramount Plus or whatever, I will probably sit down and watch this again because I'm having a blast. Um, the little kids in our screening were having a blast <sighs> too. Well, and we didn't talk about this. So, yeah, we, which, li- listen, I do think that you can bring your kids to this. But if I may recommend... Have them sit next to you. If you're a parent, don't let your kids sit like a whole row away from you. That's going to fuck it up for everybody else. You need to be, for lack of a better word, you need to keep your kids on a leash. Also, when we saw John Wick, um, uh, I don't know if I told you about this. I was between three different groups that between the three of them, somebody was talking the entire movie. Um, uh, And, and. It, fortunately both of these movies were good enough that i was able to over like i can't imagine like if this was happening during ant-man i would have been like god fucking i would want to want to crawl out of my skin like get me out of here um but uh point is movie good we're going to talk about it with a special guest trisha hirschberger that's right you sons of bitches stay tuned because trisha's joining us to talk about the dungeons and dragons movie but first as always, if you want to watch this live, you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. Uh, also, new show with Sal that is coming to YouTube. We dropped a sneak peek uh, to patrons first, and it's going to go back to being a patron exclusive. But for right now, it's available. Uh, Mutant Academy, which is a new show that I'm doing with Sal. It's kind of a spin off of Spider-Versity, which we're still doing, cool. um, where we're talking about X-Men movies. Sal and I are talking about X-Men movies. We started with the um, animated pilot that never went to air, Pride of the X-Men. Uh, so go check that out. We'll be doing that every month starting with the first x-men movie so get excited for that um also if you backed hellbent god bless you thank you so much uh but i just sent out backer kit surveys so please fill those out um especially if you were drawn in uh you if you're getting drawn in the comic we literally need you to fill that thing out so we can finish the comic so please do that sooner rather than later you got a couple weeks but you know the sooner the better um also, on Spotify, we ask a question every week. Last week's question, or a couple weeks ago's question, was, would you like there to be a Shazam 3? If so, what would you like to see in it? And Yeshua Wazalusi said, I guess so. I really like the first one, but the trailers for the second one didn't do it for me. So maybe they need to change a change of some kind. And Sailor Gains 18 said, Shazam, Shazam 3 needs Mr. Mind is a really dope Shazam villain. And... Could, Spoilers for that movie. The post credit scene was one of my favorite parts of that movie, so I agree. More Mr. Mind, please. Why the way that you say Shazam sounding so funny today? I don't know. Shazam. 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 I don't know. You're it's, saying it I right. Know. I don't know. At first I, I'm no, like, but I, I get what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Coming out weird, but I don't know what to do about it. Anyway, yeah. Shazam. It's Shazam. It's weird that Shiz, it, it's like Shuz, but yeah. it's not Shuz. It, all right. So if saying Shazam is supposed to turn you into your like idealized form, if I, when I get old, would I become a young, like, let's say I'm in my fifties, things aren't working so good. And I say Shazam almost fucked it up again. If I say Shazam, do I become like me thirties prime? Here's what we know. Asher Angel's character is turning 18 and apparently looks like Zachary Levi as an adult. So yes, I don't have an answer to you. I don't want to be me, but what a bummer if your idealized former Zachary Levi, no offense. I'd much rather, if I had to choose, if I'm saying Shazam, I'd rather be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. I, th- I would rather that be who I transform into if I was if I was choosing. <laughs> I hear you. I, I I like Adam Brody. I think that that's a good idea. That's a, a good nice one. Form. That's a good I'm, form. Well, listen, listen, if I turn into Megan Good, I'm not complaining. Yeah. I, that's, that's still a vast improvement. Um, Anyway... Uh, Shazam. Um, so let's do. Uh, we have to do news this week. There, there's too many news things. 
uh, and and we mean entertainment news. There's also big, actual, real world political news. We're not going to talk about that. That's not what the show is. God damn it. Um, so it's mostly Marvel stuff, and I'm gonna skip over one of the bigger things because it's it's more of a comic thing, and I think when people care about the movie thing, Ike Perlmutter. Uh, who has been the head of Marvel Entertainment, which is primarily for for it's primarily the comics. For a long time, it's been the comics. He used to have a lot of say in the movies, and then Kevin Feige said, "No, thank you," because Ike Perlmutter is famously a fucking asshole, um, allegedly, I guess. Um, but uh, uh, so he's mostly a comics guy. He just got fired, which is, I think, objectively a good thing because he's like a big Trump confidant, and he's just been he tried to get the Black Panther movie shit canned and the Captain Marvel movie shit can he's just uh supports things that we don't support on this show but um i am a little bit so i was like when i saw that news i'm like fuck yeah and then i read it a little bit more and it's like yeah because they're consolidating and so now the comics are more under the movie brand i'm like oh then maybe this could be bad um maybe maybe this could be bad things for the comics but we'll see don't know uh they i think uh comic pop did a thing on it and they're probably a bit more informed on that stuff than i am but anyway that's just big news let's get into um this stuff that i think we'll need to unpack more and i think one feeds into the other we're going to talk about victoria alonso and then we're going to talk about Jonathan Majors, which is going to get tricky. Um, but let's start with Victoria Alonso. She has been a uh, main producer over at Marvel since the jump. Um, and uh, she just got fired. And people kind of don't know why. Uh, Marvel, Marvel said she uh, produced a movie. Let me see if I can bring up the name of the movie. Argentina 1985. Um, she is Argentinian, I believe. Um so this was very uh, important to her. It's about a big, a big historical event in Argentina, and even though this movie has been in production for years, uh, came out months ago, was nominated for an Oscar. Suddenly, Marvel's like, "Ah, breach of contract. You're fired." Which I guess me to- about she's doing press on it right now, which is the breach of contract. It's supposedly, Suppo- yeah, that's what they're saying. Um, also, she is the she has been the head of um, uh, the TV stuff and the CG stuff specifically their CG and their TV stuff, which of course have gotten a lot of pushback. Um, and uh, I know some of their movies have not been the uh, home runs that usually they typically are. Um, and some of the reasons have been given for that stuff. I, I, I want to know your thoughts on this, Roxy, because I, uh, broad strokes, I feel like she's being scapegoated and I feel like it's a bad look on Marvel to be like, oh man, we need, our movies aren't making all of the money. They're just making a ton of money. So we should fire somebody. Where's a woman? Is there a woman that works for us that we can fire? Oh, and she's uh, uh, a woman of color? Great. Perfect. Fire. Um, not great optics is what I'm getting at. But I want to know your thoughts on this. <laughs> what part do you want my thoughts on, DJ? Just the fact that she the left, the fact that she was there, the fact that the internet has ripped her and said go woke go broke on every single video in regards to her the fact that she is a queer woman (laughs) oh that's right yeah and has been uh, advocating for queer rights substantially um in the media and causing quote-unquote waves um mixing her opinions with her work um the, the only thing that i the only part that I don't, I can't speak to is that there seems to be some VFX people who don't like her. Yes. Um, like three, maybe. Yeah. I've heard, obviously we, we know that Marvel has not treated its VX, VFX departments. Well, true of most studios. Uh, and, and that is, and listen, she's a big power player so she's probably done some messed up things to workers right in that sense and the underpaying people especially and we treat our vfx departments like shit i will say i don't know that that's specifically her fault fault. like i I think whoever was in that role would have done the same thing um that's why i'm saying i i can't speak to it because yeah if she's difficult to work with then that's something i'm unaware of you know like I, i i don't know i haven't worked with her them losing her and the fan reaction, fan reaction to her being gone, disturbing. Mm-hmm. Disturbing. Mm-hmm. Like all of the YouTube videos. Finally, she's out. She finally she's out and not out of the closet, out of the 
out of the system that we need her out of. She's the reason these movies have sucked recently, and she never made a good movie in her life. I was like, what What are you guys even fucking talking about? Yeah. Like, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. Uh, just oh. brutal, brutal across the board. This was like, this is one of my least favorite aspects of doing this job. For sure. And I think that's all I guess we can say about it. I yeah. just, not not great optics. Um, and again, when you talk about her, you know this this movie Argentina 1985 and her support, like like this article I have from Variety is talking about how like she was at the 2022 Glad Award. Like she, it's like she really supported some like, and she was very outspoken about the "Don't Say Gay" bill. It's like yeah, yeah, I kind of vibe with this lady, and yeah, I don't, no wonder people don't like her. Yeah, I mean, and you're right because I, 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 you've probably been in situations too where somebody gets let go and fans are frustrated or whatever, and you're and you're like, well, no, I work with that person; they're kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so it's maybe- happened to me so many times, DJ. That that's yeah. why I just said what I said because yeah. sometimes you work with somebody who, on paper, you would also be rooting for, yeah. but as you've worked with them, you're like, oh god, I can't come out and publicly say this, but. That person was a fucking nightmare. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's true about her, but I'm not saying that it's not because I don't, we don't know. know. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. Uh, but I can feel, I feel pretty confident saying optics not great. Um, yeah, yep. Anyway, uh, and this segues into, because she, so we said what Marvel said is that basically she breached contract. Her people said, and I had it, and now I've lost it, was they wanted, okay, here we go. Um, Patty Glazer, Alonzo's attorney, Patty Glazer calls, and this is from Variety, uh, Alonzo's attorney, Patty Glazer calls this contention absolutely ridiculous and counters that the executive was terminated, quote, when she refused to do something she believed was reprehensible, end quote. Uh, though what that was remains unclear. Could it be something to do? With Jonathan Major segue, um, because also in the news, Marvel not having a great week. Um, also in the news, uh, Jonathan Majors may have allegedly uh, assaulted his a friend that is a girl. His girlfriend still ambiguous. Um, the lawyers immediately, uh, his lawyers immediately came out and did what lawyer, I mean, the same thing Johnny Depp's lawyers did everything. It's like, actually, not only is he innocent, he's the victim. And we'll have proof, definitive proof. And they released texts from this person seemingly without that person's consent they were the there's jonathan major's lawyers released these texts as a way to like prove his innocence but it actually made things feel like ickier like uh, i don't know that this is having the result that you want um I, and then around this similar to the, the justin roiland thing which we didn't talk i don't really need to get into he was quote unquote exonerated but similar to the Justin Roiland thing, a bunch of other people came out and like, yeah, we've known Jonathan Majors is a problem for a while, and I'm glad we could talk about it now. And so, oh, SpaghettiOs, Jonathan Majors might not be a good dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm having such a hard time talking about this story because every person on the internet claims that they know exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. And has such a strong opinion. He either did it or he didn't. I don't know. I know the same things that you do. Saw those texts. Here's what we know. Here's what we know to be fact. Um, Jonathan Majors was arrested. That's what we know, right? Mm -hmm. So what we've heard is that there was a dispute in a taxi cab between Jonathan Majors and his girlfriend. And that she was looking at his phone. And they got into an argument. And then... Later on, when she um, went was with the police, there was lacerations on behind her ear and on her neck, mm-hmm. and that the he was arrested. And the articles allegedly said that there was strangulation involved. Then we know that she recanted her statement yeah. because mm, the police. I mean, because his lawyers told everybody that she did that. That happens often where somebody recants their statement. That doesn't mean that she he didn't do it. That doesn't mean yeah. that she wasn't paid off. That doesn't mean that he did do it. That doesn't mean that she won't still prosecute. That doesn't mean anything other than that's, I guess, what happened. Yeah. Um, and now the text messages have been released. And also, like you talked about, I think there was four additional accounts of people being like, oh, this happened to my friend who's currently texting me. This happened to this person. This happened to this person. It's one of New York and Hollywood's best kept secrets that he is an abusing piece of shit. Yeah. Um, 
which I have no idea if that's true or not, yeah. but that's what's happening right now. And mm. my question without sounding like a, the worst person on the planet, DJ, to you is mm. does it matter if he is? Because we're about to watch Ezra Miller star in The Flash. So I, I mean, I don't mean does it matter to you as a human? Will, will, I mean, it, will it affect his career? Good question. Well, and Johnny Depp, I, you know, good question. Uh, open, open question. Um, because everybody uh, already is like, well, the army commercial that he was in got pulled, so he's being canceled. Which is and I'm fucking, like, which is fucking hilarious. The no, army of all things, Re- you I guys know. are going to draw a line, a line here. Um, uh, let's uh, look at uh, army abuses, to, whatever. Um, I know, but, I was thinking, but sure, thing, but okay, but for this, like. Genuinely, I'm. I want to know: Are we saying, as a society and as a studio, if he's found guilty, he's out, or well, are we like? Does it matter? Um, you'd like to think so. Well, uh, you'd like to. You'd like to think that it would matter if it if it's if it's proven or if he's again if he's kind of like been um challenging to work with. I know he's he has said things in interviews as an actor that remind me of things I've actors I've worked with have said. And I'm like, Oh, this sounds like a challenging person to be around. <laughs> um, um, uh, neither here nor there. Um, yeah, there's a dip. I mean, totally, but there's a difference yeah. between challenging to work with and beating women. You know? Yes. Like- yes. Uh, the Ezra Miller of it all, I <laughs> will say this and it is unfortunate. Um, it to, to the degree that there seemed to be a bigger backlash to Will Smith slapping someone than, all the Ezra Miller stuff that there might be factors that are unfair against Jonathan Majors as opposed to Ezra Miller. The fact that he's black might have more of an effect on him than it would Ezra Miller. But, um, Hmm. I don't know. I'd like to think so. Is it because uh, Ezra Miller had already shot the flash and, and, and we'll see cause Jonathan Majors already Majors. shot Loki season two. So. so, you know, like I just, I don't know at this point, there's so many people who we have found to be varying degrees of pieces of shit. Yeah. Um, you know, like there was the te- those text messages with the Jeremy Renner situation that came out. Um, that remember with the. Well, and I don't want to start. I, I don't want to start naming names off the top of my head in case I'm remembering stuff incorrectly. But there, are, there are many A-list actors that we know abuse women, ha- have right. abused women in the past. Like we know. Um, and, and athletes as well. And oh fight, yeah, definitely you know, athletes. Fight. And it, even to John Lennon was like, "Yeah, I fucking beat my." But this was decades ago, so whatever. But he's like, "Yeah, I beat the women I'm with." What are you talking about? And it's like, so it's part of the Lindsay, culture. Lindsay Buckingham with yeah. uh, CD Mix, like that. Oh I'm, my god, we so, suck. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of people, and I'm just, I'm truly wondering why, like people. Or right now are standing up for Jonathan Majors or fighting against him so like combatively online. Like he did it, he didn't do it, he did it, he didn't do it. Yeah. And all I keep wondering is if if he didn't do it, it if we prove that he didn't yeah. do it, if somehow we're able to say that, what happened? Like, is everybody gonna just drop it? Yeah. And if he did do it, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now what? Now what? And because it is, it is. Inc- there, um, if he faces consequences, then it's like, yeah, Ezra Miller needs to face consequences. Then that's we need to keep it, keep it fair. Um, just to wrap this up, just I go guess back to. I guess it's also it depends what when we say if he did it. Yeah. What's it? What's it? Yeah. What's it? You know, like the way that the people were coming forward about him, and again, this is all alleged. Yeah. To me, it sounded like, um, like there was more that th- there was more than just like emotional abuse, more than just physical abuse. It sounded like some really dark things. Yeah. The Edgar Miller stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, the grooming, the the th- yeah. uh, alleged whatever. Like, and there are there is differences and similarities, and I'm I'm with you on some of this, but like at the at the same time, I. I is it the same punishment for anybody that does anything it, or does it matter what it is that they did? Well, I think like, um, um, as we talked about before, like you're in a position of great privilege. We've allowed this to be a position of great privilege. So, you know, do you keep, 
getting to benefit from that? And can you even change when you're in that position? Like, the, does Ezra Miller at this point really have any motivation to change their behavior? Yeah, I know. I know. You and, know? you know, like James Gunn tweeted something and lost his job. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I just don't know what is we have. I mean, it's the Wild West. Yeah. We have, there's, it's a completely lawless land. Yeah. It, and it seemingly de- matters so much about like your publicist. Remember years ago it came out about Sly and no. it was in the news for like a hot second that no. the, some abuse something and then gone. Yeah. Why? Well, there, and then like, well, you talk about the Brad Pitt stuff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, yeah. and yeah, and, and it, it, you're right. It, yeah. It depends on it's, it's, and, and you know, the, unfortunately the conversations are not in these studios are not, can we abide this? It's more like, Ooh, what will people think? What you know what I mean? Think, what will they, what, what are the optics think, of it? It's what will like, people pay for? Exactly. What can we get away with? And it's like, well, that's fucking sucks. That's fucking stupid. That's not how we should gauge these things. Um, so to circle back real quick to the text um, that supposedly prove his innocence. Um, the woman apparently texted, it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. Um, I will say this. If I one of my female friends had like a black eye and she was like, oh, it was my fault for trying to grab his phone. I have follow-up questions because what what does that mean? Um, yeah. That doesn't. Uh, uh, and also uh, there's a Jezebel article that talks about it um, that has this quote most victims accused of being mutually abusive are just having emotional or even physical reactions to the abuse that they are suffering says amanda kippert a domestic violence expert and director of editorial at domestic shelters um abusive partners will then accuse their victims of being abusive in order to shift the blame as a form of gaslighting so we don't know we don't know yet what the situation is yet i will say it doesn't look good to me um but um i we'll see we'll see where this goes um don't abuse anybody please uh don't it's bad don't do it uh and we should hold people that do that stuff accountable um but as we saw we said it wasn't going to touch on it but as we saw our system is like we we work in a system that's like listen we can't get you for trying to overthrow the government but paying off a porn star oh we get you for that so i'm just saying maybe our uh justice system isn't the best um that's that uh we'll see what marvel does um i will feel pretty confident they're not going to reshoot parts of although if any studio is used to like reshooting things at the very last second it's marvel so you know who knows what they'll do with loki season two he's on Um, trial i think that it goes to court may 8th all right well we'll see yeah but listen (laughs) enough of that stuff let's go let's talk about some good things we're gonna start talking about dungeons and dragons all right we are back uh to talk about dungeons and dragons honor among thieves uh this is coming out as of this recording this friday it is uh directed by john francis daly and jonathan goldstein written by uh john francis daly and jonathan goldstein and michael Gilio, uh, a charming thief and a band of unlikely adventurers embark on an epic quest to retrieve a lost relic, but things go dangerously awry when they run afoul of the wrong people. Uh, right now on Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 90% uh, and an audience score of 94%, and it says an infectious, good-spirited comedy with a solid emotional core, Dungeons & Dragons, Honor Among Thieves, offers fun, fantasy, and adventure, even if you don't know your HP from your OP. And I guess I'm one of those people because I don't know what OP is. But you know who can help me explain to me what OP is? Uh, unless it means overpowered. I'm assuming it means it something means else. It means overpowered, DJ. Okay. All right. Well, then I do know. It just felt like a weird content. HP and OP. Oh, they're not the same thing. I don't know why we're comparing the two. But whatever. Um, uh, we have a very special guest to talk about this who can help us navigate uh, the Dungeons and Dragons world. Trisha, hello. Hi, DJ. I think you should trust your instincts. You're right. HP and OP are both abbreviations, but other than that, they don't have much in common. And you do know what they are, my friend. Listen, Trisha, that's just the lesson of my life. I should believe in myself more. That's what my therapist tells me. <laughs> yes. And me what too. Is I'll join your therapist. HP. Hit uh, it can be either hit points or health points, depending on the game that you're playing. But generally, it means how much life you have. If yeah. your HP gets to zero, you are either incapacitated or your character is dead. Depending something on which really, you're playing. 
fun about me is that I never ask what something stands for and I just make it up in my head. So I thought it meant happy person. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, someone who has a lot of HP would be a happy person because they're healthy. Happy person. Mm -hmm. happy and healthy well and so trisha for i don't know who would be listening to this show that's not familiar with you you've been on many a time we love having you uh who are you where can they find you what are you up to hi friends Uh, i have been on this show before but it's been a long time so for any for anyone who i have not met before hi my name is trisha hirschberger i uh mostly do technology and video game on camera hosting and on camera content uh, and on the days that I am not on set working for the various brands that I do on camera work for, I make my own content on like YouTube and Twitch and all, all the good places. Um, and on the days I'm not on set, I love to be here with you guys. Well, we really appreciate it. And uh, you actually are taking some time out of your busy streaming schedule to stop by. So everybody should, and there'll be links in the description for stuff to check out your stuff. Um, so please go check that out. But thank you for joining us. So you uh, you were just telling us before we went on air that you've had a couple opportunities. You were at the premiere. How was the premiere of this movie? Was it fun? Uh, it was really fun. I mean, it was just a bunch of people gathered in one place to celebrate tabletop RPGs. Uh, yeah. Whether it be Dungeons and Dragons specifically and what that meant to you or other tabletop RPGs and homebrews that people enjoy. Um, you know, a lot of people, I think they said the attire for the premiere was business casual, but mm. nobody did that. Everyone went in like their finest fantasy flair. Um, uh, listen, so it was a really good time. You, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, y'all are in the business of fantasy. That is business attire. It's like yeah, going to the Ren Fair. True. That's a good way to think of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the the premiere was awesome. It was the second time I was seeing the film because I got a chance to see an early screening um, here in Los Angeles that was taking place just after the film premiered at South by Southwest. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was fun getting to see it a second time, too, because I feel like I, I caught some more Easter eggs uh, on second viewing. Well, and we're, we're going to start with spoiler free, but I do think that's a good segue into one of the things I want to point out about this movie is that it is dense and it's something that i appreciated about like we've gotten into like a series with blockbusters where you can kind of sense of like hey we're just kind of sometimes you're just, hey, we're just doing the thing this one was like no we're going to take advantage of every moment everything's going to be a joke or a reference or a beat or a thing it's going to be we're not going to waste a single second of this movie and i appreciated it even though i didn't necessarily um there was some things I'm like, I'm sure this is a reference to something. I'm sure, I, listen, I'm sure people that play D&D know what this is, but it, I, you know, I don't, but it's still cool. Yeah, and I don't that's- know about dense though, DJ. Like when I think about dense, I feel like that's, uh, I, I hear you're saying jam packed, but when I think yeah. about dense, I think like difficult to digest sometimes. And I do think that about this movie, it, it kind of, it, can something be dense and feel light as a feather at the same time? Because yes. this movie maybe was dense and felt light as a feather. Like, mm-hmm. even in the darker moments, and there were a lot of really poignant, especially in the third act, beautiful reveals and storylines that culminated. But I felt like this, it felt like a joy to get through it. And when I was watching the trailers, I was a little nervous that it might be a little too dense. And it wasn't for me. Yeah, I feel like dense in the sense that there's a lot crammed in, um, Mm -hmm. but not dense in like a hard to get through kind of way. One of the things that I really appreciated about this film, and I think audiences will really appreciate about this film, is that you do not need to have an intense knowledge of Dungeons and Dragons to appreciate and have a good time watching this movie. I think the movie's incredibly accessible, uh, and I do think that lots of folks will really enjoy it when they go to see it, regardless of your tabletop gaming history. Uh, And if anything... Maybe it will draw more people into the hobby. Like when I when I left the first time I saw it, all I thought is, I can't wait to go home and play D anD. Yeah. And that's exactly the feeling you want when you leave watching this film. It, it's funny because I similarly I had the same thing. I'm like, maybe I should get into this. And then I remember watching my friends play and be like, oh, there's so much math. There's just so much. <laughs> it can just be maybe. I just like the idea. I like I liked. So okay. So uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So Trisha, as a fan of because. Roxy, not to presume, I'm going to assume that, like me, you you're, weren't necessarily a big D&D kid growing up. No, I've played a couple of times, but no, I'm not like a Trish uh, who gets down and dirty with the D&D and knows all uh, the things. Okay, so of the three of us, I'm... DM, I would be like, ah. 
Yeah, yeah. So of the three of us, I'm the most green. Uh, so, but Trisha, as a as a fan, did this scratch the did this? Because uh, I know the our last Dungeons and Dragon movie, which was like 20 years ago, was not beloved. It, did this did this like scratch that fan itch for you? Did this like is this what you would wa- have wanted from a Dungeons and Dragon movie? Uh, short answer, yes. Uh, more okay. in depth answer. I think it was a really smart move on their part to make it a comedy. Mm-hmm. I think that in the past when people have tried to do uh, certain fantasy epics and make them very serious and very heavy, that's kind of where audiences get into sticky territory. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas this being a Dungeons and Dragons film kind of embraced the lightheartedness that a lot of groups feel when you play around the table with your friends. And a lot of yeah. the lightheartedness that we've seen in a lot of popular streaming uh, D&D and tabletop RPG channels now that you know pretty much any group can, can stream their play on Twitch or have a YouTube channel. And the things that have really resonated with non-players the most are those those comedic moments of the players around the tables just having to improvise the solution and figure it out and it you know sometimes the dice are not in your favor and how do you get out of those situations but it's mostly just friends having a great time even if the things happening in the story tend to be a bit more serious and dark and because yeah. they made this film a comedy they were able to i felt capture a lot of that spirit of play in it that really resonates with people so much when they play Dungeons and Dragons. And I just, I think if they had gone a more serious, intense, hardcore fantasy Game of Thrones-esque route, uh, they would have lost that. And it would have been harder to capture the fact that it's a game. It's a game that we play to have fun. Uh, So making it a comedy, I thought, was a really smart play. It also helped to distinguish it. I remember coming out of Comic-Con this year, we had that Rings of Power trailer. We had Mm -hmm. the um, Game of Thrones, uh, whatever, this House of the Dragon trailer. And then we had this. And I remember having those conversations all be clumped together. Like, which of these three are you most excited for? Which of these three do you want to see? And without making D&D specifically uh, like what Stranger Things did, where it's not really a story, you're just watching people, people play the game, I thought this was the best way to distinguish it because it didn't feel like those other two things whether you like those other things or not they already exist and so I haven't Mm -hmm. seen something like this and was hoping for something like this because like you said Trisha the reason that I've played a couple times and the reason I want to get more into it is because it's supposed to feel like a break and a joy and even there can be some really dark twisted storylines when you're playing but it's always like you said a game and I, I think that one of the reasons that I was not super into Rings of Power and have not been able to finish it. And again, I know a lot of people love it. It's different. But it just felt like such a chore to me. It felt like, ooh, okay, I got to watch this right now. And instead, this movie just felt like a breeze. Mm -hmm. And I also think that something, when you decide to do something more serious, you also need to be ready to do the work to match that. Because if you're storytelling does not match the tone in that if if you're telling a more serious story but you're not putting in the work to have everything like click and like be more mature and be more thoughtful then it can be about pain in the ass to watch uh but i think i think i agree i agree with both of you that i think making this uh, comedy was a really smart choice i think the trailers turned me off because the trailers very much sets a vibe of like oh gee whiz how do we get into this jam and i'm like oh my god this looks like it's gonna be a not great loved it Loved it. Uh, <laughs> listen, it, it, is it going to change the world? No, it's not. Uh, to, to go back to the dense conversation, is this like a fucking A24 type change the way you think about the world movie? No. But I do wish more blockbusters put the amount of effort these these creators clearly put into this movie. Like really trying to think about like... There's so many creative uses of the tools. Not getting into spoilers, but like if we introduce a port, it's the portal gun. I know it's a staff and it's Matt, but it's the portal gun from Portal. <laughs> the um, the other staff. <laughs> sure, and I'm sure it's in the game. I, there's a specific thing from the movie that I want to know: is it in the game? Like, a, is it is it a thing in the game? But I'm not there yet. But the way they utilize that, and like, for example, not to dunk on other movies. But like, let's say Ant Man, when uh, the most recent Ant Man, where they're like, "We need you for a heist." What's the heist? Jump down this hole and touch a thing. It's like, well, that's not a, that's not a heist. What are you talking about? This one, it it's like, is no, a heist, DJ. Don't at me with sure. your Ant Man stuff right now. This one goes through. Okay, so we need to do this and then this, and we utilize the things we've introduced. It's just basic 
blockbuster storytelling that we don't do as well anymore and so it was cool it I, listen i love superhero movies but i also love the fact that like the john wicks uh and the creeds and all the non-superhero movies are making bank at the box office right now i hope this is another one please everybody this movie's a blast go see it i'd like to see different types of blockbuster movies this is a good one i'd like more of them um but yeah i was just pleasantly surprised i thought most if not all of the jokes landed i thought they really used the setting really creatively like both you said i think the idea of making it a comedy really differentiated it from a lot of the fantasy stuff we're getting right now but it was comedy it wasn't like it wasn't like poking it wasn't like oh geez it sucks that we're a fantasy movie right no there was a lot of love for the fact it wasn't poking fun of itself it didn't it wasn't trying to treat it like we're above the material we love this material we're trying to share this material and we're just having a blast telling the story and i felt like that came across the screen even to me who's somebody that's not played the game and it's like yeah also i love that like and again, this just goes back to the attention to the details, like Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so we're going to have dragons, but also Game of Thrones is on TV. People know what dragons are, so what are we going to do? Well, let's have a dragon that breathed rocks for whatever reason. Let's have a chonky dragon. Love it. Just, you know what I mean? Like, let's do things that we haven't seen, that we uh, that I'm sure exist in people's D&D games, but we have not seen on the big screen. Why not do those things? Like, that's the point. Um, so, loved it. Uh, recommend going and seeing it. Any final spoiler-free thoughts before we go into spoilers? I haven't spoken to anybody who saw this that didn't like it. It's just a spoiler-free thought of mine yeah. that after the screening that I went to, it was just like an overwhelming, yes, that was really good. Um, and then online, and all of my friends, when I went to Twitter, you know, you do that thing. <laughs> people that I follow for as long as that exists oh my god yep. he's killing me he's killing my twitter game um but I, I went and did that everybody loved it like i you guys any conversation i've had about this so i feel like that is it's crazy how they were able to accomplish putting out a DD game that everybody the the fans the non-fans everybody's like yeah for sure that's yeah. wild yeah yeah, I mean, think? my any spoiler-free thoughts, I feel like I've already said, but go see it. You'll have a great time. Um, you know, I, I like I said before, but just to kind of give as another example, Legend of Vox Machina is probably our most successful D&D on-screen, uh, you know, piece of content in a very long time, if not ever. Um, and that is also a comedy and has a very fun spirit of play to it. Yeah. So I, I think in, cool. in kind of going in that same vein that was really smart uh we did have a couple discord questions that i think we've answered actually leonard kim asks um do you think dungeons and dragons honor among things will appeal to mass audience or mass audiences or does it feel niche um and i think we've said it's i think everybody i think everybody it, will like it. i don't think it'll be niche unless you're one of those people that's really turned off by fantasy content yeah, just if you're general, someone if who's for, like, I don't like anything fantasy. I don't want to see magic. I don't want to see magical creatures. Then you, I mean, you're going to see those things in this film. Yeah. So yeah, if yeah, you yeah. just baseline hate fantasy, maybe not for you. But I also think, as Roxy said, sometimes fantasy can seem like a chore because there's so much to it. And I don't think this feels like that. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good point too, that it doesn't, um, and I don't know how fans feel, but obviously there is lore, but it doesn't get like, bogged down and in fact i really appreciated that like it didn't feel the need to be like anytime it introduced a new right like here's a cat person it's not like well here's the name of this species and what is like no they just exist in this world don't worry about it i'm like cool i don't need i'll figure it out later i'll look it up online yeah, i don't you need don't you to need stop to the worry movie about it, but all the people in the audience that play D D are like tabaxi yeah. You know, so it like makes it fun for everybody. <laughs> also, the the that is also one of the funniest moments in the movie. Um, and Mike Joyce asks, uh, I'm not a uh, D&D fan, but went to a sold out early screening of the movie and loved it. What makes this a and d movie and not some generic fantasy movie? And I think we talked about what it, how it differentiates itself. But I think, Trisha, maybe you can speak to is it is it. Is it just the that that sense of play that makes it feel like a D and D movie, or are there other elements that like really made it feel like a D, like specifically a D and D movie, not just a normal fantasy movie? That's a great question. So uh, it, it it is the sense of play, but moreover, what makes it a D and D film is it's beholden to the rules of Dungeons and Dragons, which is 
you, I love my rules in my games. Mm-hmm. I know that's not very popular, but I'm one of those people. Um, but the fact that when you cast this specific spell, it has these limitations. And that is a spell that goes back decades to old school Dungeons and Dragons. Like for me, when I was in high school playing in the basement, I, you know, like when I'm watching this film, every spell that's cast, I can tell you what the name of it is, what the range of it is, what, and they stuck to all of that as if you were playing a tabletop game of D&D. That, uh, you know, specific race you were talking about that's a hilarious part of the movie, Mm -hmm. that is a Dungeons and Dragons race in the game. And that has its own specifications. And all of those were held to accurately. Now, I'm sure upon more viewings, you could probably go through with a fine tooth comb and find some kind of inconsistency. Um, But there's even one part where, like, they're fighting and the floor looks to be shaped mostly of hexagons. When you play Mm D&D, there's a lot of times that you use a hexagonal map to draw out your combat scenarios so that players can visualize them and know the exact ranges they are away from the person they're trying to hit. So if your spell only has a conical range of 20 feet, can you hit them? You have all that in front of you. So the movie was beholden to the rules of the game, which was so fun to watch. And for me, as someone that's played D&D for years, uh, when I watch any fantasy, and I think a lot of people feel like this, anytime something happens in a fantasy movie, you're thinking back to what D&D thing that is. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, if they survive, uh, like I went to see the the premiere with Erica Ishii, uh, and she said, you know, I would love to break apart these combat scenes by rounds because in Dungeons Mm -hmm. and Dragons a round of combat is six seconds so if we took that combat scene in the film and broke it up into six second increments to see who did what action on each turn like this is where D&D gets nerdy and (laughs) mathy and the 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 show the movie did that without forcing you as the audience to do that yeah so even if you've never played you don't need to know the range of these spells or that six seconds is around or how much falling damage they might take falling this distance. But if you do know and love that stuff and the movie is book accurate and game accurate to that stuff, that's super cool. So that's, that's cool. what I would say makes it a and d film specifically. That love makes it. me want to know so much more about D&D. Um, from <laughs> the little that I've played, for me, the differentiation was like what I was willing to accept also because of n- knowing the classifications of the characters. Like, I'm like, oh, he's a bard. So in uh, this is not a spoiler, but in that brief singing moment, I understand what's going on here. Like, oh, that's a druid. Okay, I under now I'm that makes sense to me. So I just am able to compartmentalize. Okay, this is what you are. This is what you are. And in other fantasy movies, I might be like, that was a really corny, cheesy moment. But here, I was like, that's what this is. That's at yeah. your core. That's <laughs> under your classifications. That's what you do. Uh, you're going to sing. So we're going to sing. That's what we're doing. That's like, what we're doing. Yeah. Um, it was really fun uh, to even have that tiny bit of knowledge going in. Okay. So now we're going to spoilers. If you haven't watched the movie, maybe just take a little break for about 10 to 20 and come on back. Uh, we, I do recommend it. I do recommend not spoiling uh, for yourself. Uh, going to spoilers, 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 spoilers. First question I have for Trisha is, is Chonky Dragon in the game? Because I, lo- I can't remember his name, but Chonky Dragon was great. What a so good great, bit. There great are dragons in the game. Yeah. And you can make them as the DM storyteller. You can make them whatever weight you'd like to make cool. them. Cool. Let's, so let's do more Chonky Dragons. It is entirely feasible for at any game of Dungeons and Dragons for someone to dream up a very Chonky Dragon. Love it. And the fact that Chonky Dragon has certain mobility issues as a result <laughs> of being Chonky yeah. is even funnier. So it's not like in D&D there is a specific Chonky Dragon one could look Like if to. I looked up, the, they gave his name. If I looked up his name, he might not be there. But, but no, the idea no, he, exists. I, yeah. I mean, as far as I know, there's yeah. so many hundreds of D&D books that someone yeah. can feel free to point to a very specific reference. But what I took this as is in Dungeons & Dragons, there are many different types of dragon. And yeah. generally, I think in the monsters manuals, and it's hard because I I only own specific edition monster manuals, and they change every edition. Uh, um, but 
they'll generally give you uh, some kind of like size category rating for this specific monster, like a height and weight guidelines, but that doesn't mean that there couldn't be one dragon that's specifically chonkier than what the average dragon of that type is. Like yeah. D&D gives you that room to play. And so I thought it was hilarious that that was the choice they made. And I love the setup for because there's the classic, like there's just a pile, like literally like a mountain of bones leading up to this den. And it was a great, it was like, oh yeah, well, he, clearly he's well fed. So no no wonder he's a little bit on the chonkier side. He, I don't know how people get down to wherever this is, but enough of them do. that. Uh, um, so yeah, my big, some of my major takeaways was Chonky Dragon uh, is, the, is the best. Uh, Owlbear is awesome. Um, and also... Uh, every cast member in this movie is Owl great. Owlbear. Owl, Owlbear is a winner. Um, well, and Owlbears get... are a much beloved Dungeons & Dragons classic monster. I might like, get there. People coming out... love to throw a good Owlbear into a fight. I'm into it. They're coming out with an action figure. I might get it. It was super cool. I got uh, a plushie at the screening. I now have an Owlbear plushie in my house. Ooh. And uh, if any of one listening has small children... The ABCs of D&D &D is a children's book that goes through uh, different D&D &D, uh, types of characters and monsters. And O is for Owlbear, my friends, if you buy love a it. book for your children. Love it, love it, love it. The other thing that uh, other uh, the whole cast is great, but special shout out to like, I just love like in a world where you have like the Fast and Furious guys that are like counting each punch that they're doing and how they're perceived. I love that Chris Pine is like, yeah, man, make me a dipshit. I don't care. Like, I don't think he throws a single punch in this movie. Like he's oh, always he just like, just barely escaping. Well, he's a bard. So they're not the best like melee fighter class. Love it. But I love that. I love that. I, I feel like most of our leading men would not be as comfortable with that depiction as Chris Pine is. And I really, and I, and it, and it doesn't, I just think he's great. And I think he's great in this movie. And also the uh, action scenes with action scenes with Michelle Rodriguez are fucking dope. And uh, it, she should get more, she should get her own action movie. <laughs> yeah. I'm super with you on both those things, but I am curious what you guys thought about this and, and DJ, maybe you have some insight into this, but immediately when this movie came out and the embargo was released, I was talking about it and I got a slew of people coming into my stream who said, I'm not going to go see this movie because I hear they emasculate Chris Pine in it. I felt like he was not throwing the most punches, but did you feel like they, that this movie emasculated him? No. People need to fucking calm down, man. Like I was it's not. I confused though. I don't even understand the comment because I I didn't. I was trying to think of any lines or moments or things. I felt like he was totally. I I, I thought that he he wasn't like a doofus and just like oh my god he's so annoying get him off the screen. Yeah. He was different than some of the other male characters that we've seen in fantasy and in general. But I didn't I didn't understand the the comment the note. Well, as Trisha pointed out. He's a bard. You He's know what I mean? Bard. Like that's, his, that's it, his... I, You would have to make the same comment about Yaskier in the Witcher mm. series. You would yeah. have to make the same comment about Scanlan in the Legend of Vox Machina. These are all male bard characters that are essentially, a lot of times your bards are your comedic relief yeah. character in a party. And traditionally, they're played by dudes. Yeah. Like there are female bards too, but in a lot of the media we see, bards are guys. So I yeah. would say if anyone's like, oh, they're emasculating him, you're probably new to the genre, mm -hmm. which is okay. Welcome. Yeah. Welcome mm -hmm. to the genre. But like the bard who inspires people with song and, you know, contributes to the fight when they have to, but they just know that they're the better talk us out of it guy. Yeah. Than the I, I, throw a punch to get out of it guy. And that's okay. Well, and I think that's the thing. And I think that's one thing, like, because again, Chris Pine uh, uh, was the love interest in Wonder Woman. And that and that is his function. It's not, he doesn't take the spotlight from Wonder Woman. He is the love interest. He is the, you know what I mean? And, I, and yeah. so I, I think I have much, me personally, I have um, much more respect for Chris Pine's confidence in his masculinity that it's like, I don't need to be the toughest guy on the, because it doesn't because he understands i think he innately understands that this not diminish his star power in any way he is still the star of this movie you know what the, i mean the it, bard is usually the star of yeah, the party everybody loves the bard if you ask anyone who their favorite character is in the witcher most yeah. of them are going to say yaskier 
Yeah. And listen, I love uh, both versions of Geralt and the game and the show. And I love a good stoic badass, but also fucking Chris Pine's fucking great. Uh, and I love like moments where he's like, I'm the plan guy. And they're like, well, so why do we still need you? Because what if the plan changes? I was like, yeah, <laughs> I love this dude. Fucking also uh, shout out to Reggie Jean. Is it Reggie Jean Page, Roxy? Is that how Reggie we Jean Page. Reggie yeah. Jean Page. I love Keep my husband's name out of your mouth. Listen, he was I, my favorite character in the whole film. Fucking fantastic! It's it's in a lot of ways it's mm, people don't like it when I dunk on the when I uh, whatever. It's basically the same bit as Drax, but better executed. He doesn't get jokes, but also he is capable of things. Um, and I thought this was a good. It was just well ex. It was just a well executed bit, and they used him really well. And, and if you're gonna have a character that's good at everything all the time, it's like yeah, just have him in for a moment. And I think Trisha, you can correct me, <laughs> but I do feel like this is a very distinct shout out to NPCs. Where it's like, I'm here to do a specific thing, and now that that's done, I'm leaving. But you could still be helpful. Nope, sorry, my part of the story's done. I'm leaving now. <laughs> I mean, that's definitely a shout out, but it's also just a love letter to the class that is the paladin. Mm -hmm. The paladin traditionally is of lawful good alignment. If you go back mm -hmm. old school, they're starting to change like class and racial alignments now. But generally, your paladin is like your, I do things for the right and the good, and I praise my God, and I smite the undead, and this is what I do. Uh, yeah. So it totally makes sense for a paladin to like not understand or have any time for sarcasm or jokes. Mm -hmm. And they always have like flashy armor and look really nice. Because they are, in their minds especially, the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. They're usually very confident in themselves. Uh, and the paladin class is a badass fighter class that also has, like, holy magic. Yeah. Because of their, you know, love of that god. So everything that this character does in the whole movie is such a love letter to the class that is a paladin. Um, and it made, he specifically, I was like, all I want to do after watching this movie is go home and roll up a paladin. Mm -hmm. because he did it so perfectly. And even like when he walks and they're like, is he going to go around the rock? Is he going to go around it? No, he goes over it. It's because paladins are so lawful in alignment. Yeah. Everything is, as it seems, on the straight and narrow all the time. And it was just, they, the jokes were so smart. His performance was so spot on. Like when he was like, I will only take this quest if you promise to give all the money to the good citizens who need it. Like that is, that is a paladin. Paladin <laughs> doesn't want to keep any loot for himself because he's such a good guy. Yeah. Like, and paladins can be very hard for other characters in the party to role play with because they're so staunch in their beliefs and their altruism. Whereas yeah. the thief in the party is like, yeah, but let's just get that money though. Like it's yeah. fine if we steal it. The paladin's like, don't you dare, I will smite you. And yeah. the paladins uh, are like real badass, so that's kind of scary. Uh, so yeah. anyway, Zank Yandar, the paladin, was perfectly executed in this film. Yeah, also good good joke. Like, listen, you're a good guy. Not fun to talk to, but like a good, <laughs> but a good, it's like, yeah, this is good. There's a few jokes in there that felt specifically, and maybe this is because I'm more video game focus than tabletop but there was a there was though him walking away very very much felt like npc walking away like they're just they're just going away now it doesn't it, how are they getting away doesn't matter they're just walking away and then there's a bit where there's a spell that it's not really chris pine and then the spell like it's basically a hologram to use a sci-fi term and it starts malfunctioning and it's like well this feels like less of a tabletop reference and more of a specifically a video game uh, oh no joke. that's definitely a tabletop reference Cool. So cool. when also you when you cast an illusion in Dungeons and Dragons, uh, the people who are seeing the illusion have to make a saving throw. And based uh -huh. on their stats, they either believe the illusion or they don't. And then there's other things that go into play, like whoever's casting the illusion usually has to keep concentration to maintain it. Now yeah. you see Simon get his foot stuck mm -hmm. in the thing at that point and probably starts to lose concentration. That paired with the fact that the people that are watching this that are like, this is a little strange, not sure what's <laughs> going on, might also be then starting to make, uh, become aware of the fact that something's a little strange. And in those moments in the game, your tabletop DM would be like, they start to notice something's amiss, is usually how like you as the player receive this. And it was so funny to see what a visual representation of they start to notice something's wrong would look like. Yeah. 
<laughs> just so well done. But definitely like play for play from tabletop. But you're absolutely right. Make that a shout out to like glitches in video games as well. I think that totally works too. Yeah, and I think it was, um, and obviously there's more, that, but there was a few references to Baldur's Gate, and it's like, I know what that is. I've heard of Baldur's Gate before. Um, mm-hmm. Roxy, spo- so give us some spoiler thoughts on the on this movie. So we, you were t- kind of just touching about it on it a, a second ago with the paladin and like uh, how he was so true to his character. But one of my favorite parts about this movie is that I feel like so often in movies now. They're not predictable in a bad way because in the writer's room, they were like, okay, we need a twist here. This might not be true to this character, but we're going to throw in some kind of twist because that's what audiences want. Mm -hmm. And I felt like this movie was so – all the characters did exactly what you thought they would the entire time because that's who they are. Like yeah. They rounded out who they were. And and the reason I guess that I am just saying that in the spoiler part is because I don't really know that this movie, like this movie kind of, oh, this has such a messed up, it kind of writes itself. Like they once you had their characters, they just kind of let them live in that. Yeah. And everybody did what was right to them. Like this, the second that you meet, um, uh, every single one of them like the second that you're introduced to somebody you're like good guy bad guy Mm -hmm. can tell that you on purpose screwed them over in that high situation yeah the second you grant introduced it's like well this guy's gonna fuck them over that's this guy introduce him as the con man man. in the party you know immediately (laughs) so it wasn't like the movie was relying on some big reveal or twist and by the time that we got to that um this is big spoiler by mm-hmm. the time we got to that end moment in which we decide to save Michelle Rodriguez, yeah. I was like, that was the most earned thing I've ever seen. Yeah. None of Nobody in the audience was like, you would never do that. Mm-hmm. Like, the, e- even as somebody, because obviously I really, really fuck with and relate to movies that have anything to do with bringing a mom back to life. That's yeah. my jam, as we know, vice president of the DPC Dead Parents Club. It's not a real club, but anybody with a DPC can join. Um, so I was watching this just thinking like, wow, this whole thing easily is so – I get why he did what he did. I get why he risked losing his kid because he has to – he wants to put this family back together. And in that moment where they choose to save her knowing they don't get what they – what they thought that they were fighting for this whole time. And that one line that comes, that's like t- bringing her into this life is taking her from the life that she's living right now. Mm-hmm. Because it's been so long. You don't know. You don't know yeah. where she is. You don't, we, none of us know what's out there. Is there a heaven? Is she somewhere better, different? Has she created a whole world for herself? Like yeah. all of the things. And I just, I couldn't believe that they had me on their side with the decision they made. I just thought it was so well deserved that it made the whole movie for me i love i loved the rest of the movie but the third act in those final moments i was like that's what made this really special and different that every person in here was like yeah you that was the right choice and i can't believe i thought that but i did yeah and i think that's what what i I was trying to touch on earlier is that like this isn't going to revolutionize the medium but like just do it, there's something to be said for just doing the thing you're trying to do well. Like, you know what right. I mean? Just like really just executing Blockbuster 101 to the best you that you can. You know what I mean? Like really utilizing all the pieces you have with as as um, IP dependent as we've gotten and this kind of sense that you, you watch a lot of these movies and it'll just be like, well, the IP's enough. Like we can just kind of like slap this together. Just doing like the Blockbuster formula real good is real good. Like, it's still real good. Like, and, and, and also to the degree, I don't know how much this factored in this, but you'll hear stories about to keep reveals or spoilers or secrets from leaking out that like actors like Elizabeth Olsen talking about like, I didn't even know John Krasinski was in the movie. Like it doesn't help the actors because they're not performing off of anything. They don't even have the full script. So it's like, yeah, just do the, just do the thing, man. Like I, I appreciate, you know, reveals and shit, but like, just do the thing real good, and then every once in a while, just a couple other. I just want to throw out a couple really good jokes. Jonathan, the whole Jonathan bit. Oh, you're sitting there the so whole time. 
what the fuck is Jonathan's deal? It's, it's like, yeah, you assume it's, it's going to be funnier like, the second and third time you watch it, too. That joke only gets funnier on repeat viewings. Because you're like watching and you're like, I must be like Justice. It must be like a character I'm supposed to know in this movie. Nope. It's it's a fucking great. And also like, we were going to give you your reprieve. It was great. <laughs> yeah, was um, yeah uh, great bit. Also, um, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Bradley Cooper. Awesome. Funny. Uh, great, so great bit. <laughs> Such so like great. a such like a lovely the closure that yeah. maybe you could hope for that's like emotionally and psychologically healthy yeah. like in such a silly fluffy movie to have that very real moment I thought was beautiful. And her character has a type and that's great. We love it. And his <laughs> character has a type too. Yeah. 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 Love it. I love it. Listen. <laughs> Um, okay, before we go, final thoughts. Trisha, any final thoughts before we go? Final thoughts for me, this really felt like playing a game of D&D. You know, to Roxy's point of every character doing exactly what you thought they were going to do, when you roll up a character as a player and sit around a table, you have your own backstory, your own wants and needs and goals, and when you play, that's what drives your character's actions and decisions and dialogue and everything because you're playing true to that character. And that was one of the things that I thought really they captured the essence of sitting around a table with each individual, all these individual characters going on an adventure together. Um, and it made me want to play D&D. But for those who have not played any tabletop RPGs, it's a hilarious and very well done movie and you will enjoy it. I loved it. I hope that Honor Among Thieves is not the last Dungeons and Dragons movie we see. Agreed. Roxy, final thoughts. Yeah, they definitely left room for a sequel, if not more than that. Uh, there was just a couple of people that we didn't talk too much about. Justice Smith, I thought, did such an amazing job in this movie. He's yeah. the guy who plays Simon. Uh, I I love somebody who, it, like, he was the one who hadn't reached his full potential. Mm -hmm. And just that, the thing that he's fighting with himself, I just... I loved that. I loved his character. I thought he was great. And I think that he's an up and coming actor. I got to talk to him a few years ago. He's been working for a while, but this is a really big, like imagine being surrounded by Chris Pine and Michelle Rodriguez yeah. and Reggae Jean Page, who is now like the it guy in Hollywood um, and Hugh Grant, you know, you're surrounded by all these like veterans or really mega people. And to be able to stand out and hold your own like that, I was just really, really impressed by him. He was just yeah. great. Uh, also, just a resonant moment with me in the movie. I don't remember the exact line, but it's something along the lines like, if we quit while we failed, that makes us failures. And it's like, mm, this, is yeah, yeah, me. yeah. <laughs> this is meaningful for me. Uh, anyway, uh, again, I love that uh, I love superhero movies, but I also love that non superhero movies are making bank right now. Uh, go support this movie. Uh, like everybody else here would love a sequel. Uh, really enjoyed it. Also, the directors that directed this were supposed to direct The Flash. And I. Good that they're doing this. I feel like uh, Flash missed missed an opportunity with that one. But anyway, uh, go check it out. Uh, Trisha, where can people find you? Even if specifically if they're watching live, you'll be streaming right after this, right? Yeah. Um, okay. If uh, I will be streaming on just a little bit, uh, but I'm most active on Twitch nowadays. Twitch.tv okay. slash Trisha Hirschberger. I still put some stuff on YouTube, but it's mostly like overflow from Twitch kind of yeah. stuff. And uh, I, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm loving Twitch. I'm still, of course, on Instagram and Twitter. Twitter and all those places, but uh, Twitch is my happy place right now. It's the one content platform I enjoy creating content for, and I'm there about four or five days a week. If I um, may ask, what uh, what are you streaming right now on Twitch? What are you mostly playing? <laughs> a little bit of everything. Uh, okay. I am as variety as variety as it gets. I usually stream whatever's brand spanking new for like a few hours. Okay. Uh, but my full playthrough stuff, I just finished God of War Ragnarok, and I want to finish Ooh, um, Breath so of the Wild before Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Yeah. So that's like my full, full, my next full playthrough is probably Tears of the Kingdom. Um, but I'm sure something else will drop that will catch my attention. Uh, Minecraft Legends looks real good mm -hmm. and that might be fun. And I've been thinking about starting an MMO with uh, SourceFed veteran Maud Garrett. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I, so pretty much every, I stream everything besides sports games, racing games, and hardcore like war simulator FPS. I'm also going to assume that you probably didn't play the Dead Space remake. I played it for a little bit. Oh, okay. You got, you got I was a couple say. hours of it out of me. That's I, from like most new things that drop. There's a couple hours that I'll stream. 
if for nothing else than just to like see how high I can push the PC gaming settings because then it like then diagrams with my tech nerd. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah, you Ooh, gotcha, what gotcha, if I gotcha. do this? And I built this PC, but I also have this PC. And let's see yeah. how many frames we can push on it. Like that that angle of it, even if it's not yeah. something I would traditionally play. But gotcha. yeah, it, we get we get nerdy over there. But that's where I like to hang out. And sometimes I just do coffee chats. Or actually, the D&D premiere, I got ready on Twitch and had cool. my community help me, like, girl, blend under the eye a little bit mm-hmm. more and that's hair up awesome. or hair down. Like... You know, we just hang out. It's a good time. That's cool. There'll be links in the description. Check all that stuff out. Roxy, (laughs) where can people find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer, still trying to perfect the blending under the eye. It's (laughs) difficult. I need the tips. I'm so bad at it. Yeah, me so too. Hard. Me yeah, too. DJ, you uh, know. Me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you can find me at DJ Talks Trash. You can follow the show everywhere that matters at Only Stupid Answers. But on Twitter, yank out the vowels from stupid. For as long as that's a thing. Uh, uh, thank you all for joining us, and we will see you all next time. <laughs>